Hi Annette. Good morning. Hi Don Danny. Good morning. Hi Samuel Frank. Good morning. Hi Sophia Victor. Good morning and happy birthday to you. I pray that the Lord will bless you and uplift you. I pray that the Lord will elevate you in your new age. I pray for success. I pray for open heavens for you. I pray for divine health. I pray for everything that you're believing God for to come to pass. I pray that your new age will bring you forth joy, happiness, success. Above all, that your new age will give you insight and insight to the Lord, a deeper love for God, that your new age will bring open doors to you and all your dreams will come true. Happy birthday to you, Sophia. Good morning, God bless you. Joseph A. Young, God bless you. So today, I, God bless you, God bless you. To worship you, how live, Lord, to worship you, how live, how live, to worship you. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, to worship you, how live. To worship you, how live, Lord, to worship you, how live. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. To worship you, how live? To worship you, how live? How live? To worship you, oh Lord, I will live to worship you. To worship you, how live? To worship you, how live? How live? To worship you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. So, you know, you guys you guys know something like I'm a little down this morning. This, it's almost morning for me anyways. I'm a little down, like, you know, I'm a little down. Like, you guys don't know. Whenever I see... Another breaking of the new day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In a time I see another breaking of the new day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, any time I see another breaking of the new day, I just go, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Any time I see another breaking of the new day, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, cause daddy it is you that is worthy. It's you that is worthy. It's you that is worthy of my praise. Jesus, it is you that is worthy. 
Be sued at a swordy. Be sued at a swordy of my praise. Oh, the steadfastness of our God never cease. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Oh, great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is your faithfulness thanks thanks I give you thanks for all all you you have done in my life I am so glad I am so glad my soul is found rest Praise God, why give him thanks? Praise God, good morning, good morning everybody, good morning. God bless you real good. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to gaze upon his majesty to proclaim his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night oh it is good to worship and praise oh it is good to worship and praise the Lord. Oh, it is good. It is good. When our friends forsake you, it is good. When you are in trouble, it is good when you feel depression. It is good. Oh, yes, to proclaim as love in the morning. Oh, and his faithfulness at night. Oh, it is good to worship and praise oh it is good to worship and praise the lord you guys will not understand like you have woken up you are alive they did not knock your door to come and pull you out. People did not run Elta Skelter because of you. The ambulance was not blown in front of your house because of you. you. You have not, your door has not been broken for them to come pull you out this morning. The grace of God has been sufficient. You have gone to bed. You have woken up hell and hearty. Why not give praise to God? Why not thank him? Why not be grateful? So many people went to bed last night. They have not woken up. So many people went to work. They have not returned. So many people went out to some places. They have not returned. But God is faithful. God is wonderful. God is kind. The grace of God has been sufficient that you are not in the morgue this morning. You have woken up in your houses. You have woken up in different parts. You have not woken up to the mortuary. You are no better than those that have passed away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my dear Lord. Because whatever I am now, it is by your grace. Many are dying. 
Many are perishing. Whatever I am, Lord, it is by your grace. You know something? Hmm. This world is deep. We live in a wicked world where people do not mean something good for you. When the people that we associate with do not want the best for us. We live in a world that people will smile with you, people will smile at you, to your face, and then at your back, they will come down and they will do something different from the smell that they give to you. We live in the world that people will fake and pretend who they are not. We live in the world where people have used their loved ones to sacrifice for the love of money. We live in the world where friends have betrayed each other for the love of the earth, earth, earthly things. We live in the world where, a par where parents have used their children just for the sake of money. Now I'm going to tell you guys a story. Yesterday... I was sitting down with an elderly woman and we were talking and she said to me why is it that why is it why is it that sometimes you just want to be why is it that sometimes you just want to be a man and a woman who wants to hear from God is reserved if you want to hear God speak to you you gotta be reserved God cannot talk to a noisemaker God cannot speak to a talkative. If you want to be, if you want to begin a year from God, you gotta come down a little, because when God speaks, you will begin to mix it with the words of the worldly people. You will not hear, you will not listen because you're not attentive. A calm spirit, a calm mind, is able to hear a voice, even a needle that drops. Why? Because you're quiet. When you are quiet, when you are silent, when you are calm. The Holy Spirit speaks to you all the time. Something happened yesterday. Three weeks ago, a Sudanese lady was killed. She went out with friends. She went out with her friends. She drank. They party. Did all manner of things. And at the end of the day, they beat her. I don't know what these guys did to her. But they check up. And the investigation showed that she was thoroughly, intensively beaten. And at the end of the day, she was laid down on the street in the midnight. They beat her to the point of death, or they beat her to death. And she went and she was abandoned by the roadside, main road, like where the vehicles would be driving past. She went and she was kept there. A guy was coming back, like this is 3 a.m. in the morning. A guy was coming back from work. He drove on top of her. He couldn't run away. He stopped and he called the cops. He said, it's like I, it's like I stepped on a living body. It's like I matched a living body. And the cops came. Immediately the cops came. They realized that she has long been dead. They carried out all the tests. She was long gone. She was long gone. And they carried her. I am sober. Because today was a funeral. It hurts me. Because I began to ask myself, what was her joining, what was her joining like with God? Where is she going to spend her eternity? What is, what, is, what is life after death? So many questions begin to come to my mind. Some of us, we have gone out with people. We have drunk with people. We have sat with people. We have been betrayed by people. But God protected us. God guided us. He did not allow the evil ones to triumph over us. He did not allow the evil ones to laugh at us. He did not allow the evil ones to mock at us. He gave us sound health. We woke up on our bed. Do you know the unseen battles that God fights for us? When we go to bed or sleep, do you know how many angels that God brings to keep 
in it says i will give my angels charge over you hey. i love god he says he will give his angel charge over you that no evil that no evil that no evil will come near your dwelling place some of us we have not done as far as that lady has done some of us we have done worse than that lady has done but grace found us some of us we have gone out we have drunk we have party but yet god protected us but this is somebody in a foreign land she's gone today was her funeral she's gone people are gonna mourn today people are gonna cry today people are gonna lament today but the question is it could be you it could be me what will you spend your eternity where is your life after this earth where is your tomorrow if you were to leave this earth today what where do you think you're going where is home for you after now where is home for you after now nobody knows Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We are all open. We are all running. It's an heavenly rest that we can never get tired of, that we cannot be weary, that we cannot faint. We are praying for the grace of God every day. Every morning I wake up, I say, thank you, Jesus, because I am still standing by grace. Every morning I wake up, I say, Lord, thank you, because I am standing by grace. It could be anybody. She is gone. She is gone. Just like that. Just like that. Lord, for your glory. Oh, I will do anything. Just to see you. Oh. And behold, you as my king. I want to be where you are. Oh, yes, Lord. I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory. Lord, I will do anything just to see you. Hey, and be all you as my king. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. Oh, I want to be where you are. I got to be where. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory, Lord, I will do anything. Just to see you. And behold, you as my king. Yes, Lord. I want to be where you are. Jesus, I got to be where you are. So, she's gone. It is sad, right? It's a sad one. But she's gone. It could be you. It could be me. It could be anybody. It's a wicked world. We live in a world where people will tell you this is water. Meanwhile, it's kerosene. We live in a world where people will tell you this is black. Meanwhile, it's blue. We live in a world where people will tell you it is 10 just when it was 1. We live in a world where people will take advantage of the things that is supposed to be of help to them. That is the world we live in. It's a wicked world. It's a wicked world. Trust nobody. Put your trust in God. I always sing. Some 
metros in chariots some metros in horses but i will trust in the name of my god some metros in chariots some metros in horses but i will trust in the name of my god some may trust in chariots some may trust in horses but i will trust in the name of the lord i will trust in the name of the lord i don't know who you gotta trust in I don't know who you gotta call on, but for me, I will trust and believe in the name of my God. Some metros in chariots, some metros in horses, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. Some might trust in chariots. Some might trust in horses, but I will trust in the name of my God. I will trust in the name of the Lord. Some may trust in chariots, some may trust in horses, but I will trust in the name of the lord so that was it another story a lady was in a relationship with a guy they stayed in a relationship for as long as they could you know when you are dependent on someone to make to make your um to make your papers for you right they were dating they were dating, they were dating, they were dating, they were dating, and they've dated for quite a while. They've dated for quite a while. I want to place, want to place the phone well. They've dated for quite a while, and then money came. The lady was richer than the guy. And when the money came, he decided, if I get rid of her, I could have all the money. That's how the devil speaks to some of us. And we become ungrateful. We become ingrates to people who have helped us. We become ungrateful. We become an ingrate to people who have supported us, to people who have been there for us, to people who saw us through. We began to do these things. We began to do these things. We began to do these things. They ran a relationship. And at the end of the day, when the money came, he, he, he told himself, she's going to be richer than me. She's going to keep the money. Probably this, that, 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 that. You know how the devil play mind games with people. And he decided to drown the lady. He drowned the lady. He drowned her. He drowned her. In their bathroom, in their house, he drowned her and left to his country. And when he left for his country, she was there. The old house was smelling. Everywhere was smelling. Everywhere was smelling. Everywhere was smelling. And the neighbors began to ask questions What is happening? What's going on? The old neighborhood was smelling like everywhere was smelling. People began to ask questions. What's going on? What's happening? And then they called the cops. By the time they got in, by the time they got in, the old house was fermented. The lady that he drowned in the bathtub was like, this, 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 this swollen. 
Suor tas suolen. Wicked world. Wicked world. We live in a wicked world. The question is, why do we do this? Why do we engage in this art? Why do we do these things? Why, why do we envy? Why do we engage in those things? Because when we are trying to reach a place we cannot reach, then we begin to have this sense, these thoughts begin to come to our mind. The devil begin to play mind games with us. The devil begin to initiate thoughts into us. The devil begin to tell us, pinpoint things and say, you know what? If you do this, if you do that, you're going to make it. If you do this, if you do that, oh, you're going to make it. It is a lie from the pit of hell. It is a trick of the devil. Today, this morning, I'm just trying to prepare your mind to know that many have gone. That your standing is not by your grace. That your standing, your being alive, is not because you are holy. That our being alive in the land of the living is not our right. We do not deserve it. It is, it is, it is, it is a privilege that is given to us by God. And therefore, we should not abuse it. Innocent children are gone. What did they do? How did they offend the world? What did they do? Nothing. But they have gone. Because God wants them gone. And God is keeping you alive. Because he has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. That's why he's keeping us. That's why he's sustaining us. So therefore, those whom he has whom he has kept, whom he has preserved, whom he has spared their lives, should be grateful and give gratitude to him and say, Daddy, I got nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, I've got nothing to give you than to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, I've got nothing. To give you then to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Sometimes we have got nothing to give God than to say thank you. That is why I tell people, each time you come in and you want to listen, just go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. Before you even sit down and you're ready for the message, just go ahead and say, Father, thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I worship you. Father, I give you the glory. Father, I reference you. Father, I give you the adoration because there's none like you. Your word is true. Your word is pure. So today, I'm going to be stopping there. Today is our fasting. Some of you, it's already your morning. It's my midnight for me. It's my midnight. It's 12 after 12 a.m. So, I've tapped the fasting on my page. And I've also... I've also tapped the prayer points for today's fasting. Key into it. It's just 6 to 12. Fast. Pray. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy with Jesus. Then to trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy with Jesus than to trust and obey. When we walk in the swell, in the light of the world, 
So, I just want you to key in for today. It's just 6 to 12. Like you never know. So many things. God has been faithful. January to February to March through April, May, June, July, August. And now it's September. Before you know it, the year will be over. God has done so much for you. What have you done for God? I keep asking this question every time. I said, God continues to do mightily and everything for you. What have you done for God? Many have gone. In Canada, here we hear stories of people being bundled by the roadside, Sudanese dying here and there, people being killed and slaughtered like goats and sheep and tied into bags and dumped in the garbage. For God has been faithful to you and me. God continues to protect us. God continues to guide us. God continues to keep us. The little things that we do for God matters. Little fasting, 6 to 12. Some of us, we can't even do it. We cannot key in. And yet, when you see things happening for that person, you begin to jealous. When you begin to see things working in favor for someone else, you begin to envy. Meanwhile, you are your own issue. When people, when Bishop Oyedepo was denying him soul, denying his body, clothes, shoes, he was fasting, roaming the street of Lagos with fell, living in one bedroom apartment and sharing toilets. I'm sure people were not gossiping. You will never have gossips when you are struggling. As soon as you have attained a height in your life, gossips will begin to come. Now, nobody is saying trash about you. Nobody knows. Nobody would say stuff. Let me come out and say, I want to contest for the minister, for the presidentship, for the governorship. Stories will begin to come. People who might know and those I did not know have begun to come and say something. It's a wicked world. We live in a wicked world. We live in a world where people want to see you go down. We live in a world where people want to see you cry. We live in a world where people do not give you a hand when you are trying to climb. But as soon as you get to the top, they begin to tell you, you do not remember me? We were in the same school. We were in the same church. We were in the same neighborhood. But when that person was struggling, you had no idea that you knew them. You were in the same school. People of God, you got to change your ways. If you want things to work out for you, you got to change your ways. There's no magic to those things. The ways of the Lord are straight and precise. If you want good things to come to you, begin to wish people good. If you want to reap prosperity, begin to sow into Begin to sow into places that you will reap tomorrow. You want love to come to you. Begin to love and show love. You want people to be merciful and be grateful to you. Begin to show gratitude to people. You want love. In order for you to be loved, you got to love. You cannot give what you do not have. And you cannot take what you did not give. Whatever it is that you deposit out is what... You know something? Take your bank account for an instant. You go to the bank, you pay in money. When you are going to withdraw your money, you will withdraw it proudly. You will withdraw it with confidence. You will withdraw it with comfort. You will withdraw it with peace and joy and contentment in your heart. But if you do not have money in your bank account, when you go to withdraw, the banker will give you back your teller and tells you that, Madam, sir, there's no money in this bank account. When you put your ATM in, your ATM will reverse back your card for you because there's no money. But when you have money, the banker is going to stamp your check, he's going to sign it off, he's going to pay you your money, he's going to address you like madam, he's going to address you like sir, he's going to ask you, do you need an envelope? Why? Because you have money in your bank account. So is life. So is life. When you are stingy, when you are greedy, when you are selfish, these are the things that will come to you. God will not let the doors that you have shut on people to be open unto you. It's not possible. 
I hear people lament every day. They say things are not working for me. Things are not working for my good. Other people are happy. God is bringing divine helpers, divine connection to them. Why is he doing it? Because they are his own. Whatever you want to see, begin to show it. Most of us, we call ourselves Christians, but we are worse than Muslims. We call ourselves Christians. We are worse than pagans. We call ourselves Christians. We are worse than those that do not even know the name of the Lord. We do whatever we want to do. We go wherever we want to go. We say whatever we want to say. We, whatever. Like, we don't care. Whatever. And then you expect God. You expect God to throw manna from heaven to your doorstep. When people are fasting. When people are in the church. When people are struggling. How can God open doors for you when he knows that if he open doors for you, all you're going to do is use your money and pick different sets of women. When you are going to use your money to drink in the beer bar, when you're going to use your money to do whatever thing that does not please God, why do you think God should give you the money? He will not. Even if you have it now and you feel I have it, it will go down the drain. Whatever you have, you got to protect it in the hands of God. And that way, God will multiply it. You got to live by example. You got to live by example. These things truly happen and they work. You want to grow, help people to grow. You do not. You lo a candle loses nothing. A candle loses nothing when it's, it's used to lit another candle. I have a candle in my hand right now. I'm going to I'm going to pretend this is a candle. I'm going to pretend this these are candles and I lit this one. And I use this one literally to light the sun. What have I lost? What am I losing? Tell me, tell me. Tell me. What did I lose? The same candle I have is all lit up. They are all light ups. I'm using the one year to lead to this one. What did I lose? Nothing. So is life. So is life. When you help a person to go up, when you are down, they would help you to go up. Why? Because you made them to sit there. Some of you, you get to a stage, you get to a position, you think you have arrived. I made a video wherever you think you are now whatever you think you have now other people have been there that money in your bank account is just somebody's offering that money that you're saving to do something to buy a plot of land is somebody's tight tight somebody's donation so people of god you gotta be good you got to change your ways. Nobody knows. The Sudanese girl died like that. Today was the funeral. It saddens my heart. Now the question is, where is she going? Where is she going to spend her eternity? There is a place called home. There is a place when we depart this earth, we are going somewhere. So do not think that as soon as you die, it is finished. No, it is not finished. That is just a beginning of another phase for you. You got judgment waiting for you. You got God waiting for you to face. You've got eternity waiting for you to face. And it is either it's hellfire or it's heaven. There's no two ways about it. If you are thinking that I'm being partial, when you get to heaven, are you going to tell God that he was being partial? Because some of us will still say to God, some of us will still say to God on judgment day, this person does not be, deserve to be here. You are being partial. Some of us will still say it. Wake up. Some of us will still tell God on judgment day, 
you are being partial. You are favoring this person. Some of us will still tell God, may God help us in Jesus' name to, help, to live right because you will not have such opportunity to open your mouth to even look. You can't even look God in the face. You can't. He says, nobody sees his face and leave. Like, you can't. So tell me, whatever it is that we put in life is what we will reap. You so good today in your old age, you will reap. You so evil now, when you grow old and you die, you will reap. Some people were so nice, were so kind. And even when they depart this world, you will hear people say things like, Oh, your father was such a nice man. Your mother was such a nice man. I have a friend. She says, you know what? Katie, don't worry about people who are destroying you. Just die. As soon as you die, you will see how people will show so much love. Even the ones who were not talking to you would type, she was such a wonderful person. And it's true. We live in a world where people do not appreciate the living, but they appreciate the death. We live in a world where people do not celebrate the living, but they celebrate the death. When you are alive, nobody puts your picture and begins to write story about you. Just die today and see your timeline, how they will decorate poets for you. You will, want, you will feel like getting up to come and slap them all, but it's too late. What a wicked world. It takes you and me to change the world. It takes you and me to turn things around. It takes me and you to show that we are Christians. It takes me and you to show that we are of God. It takes me and you to turn the world around. And how can we do this? By being nice to each other. Not by gossiping. Not by backbiting. Not by destroying. Not by killing but with love and unity and with the word of God guiding our hearts. That's the only way. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Because some of us, we do not even know. Like, some of us are just moving on this earth as escorts. We are just moving on this earth like escorts. We do not know what tomorrow will bring forth. We do not know where we are heading. We do not know, like, we just feel that the whole existence, why we came into this world is an accident. It happened, it has happened. Whatever, however, let it be. No, you got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You gotta work out your salvation. You gotta work out your salvation. You gotta work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the Bible is speaking. You gotta work it out. Thank God that salvation is personal. Thank God that soul salvation is personal. If not, so many people will carry their families to hellfire. So many people will say, because of what you did to me, all of us are going to hellfire. But thanks be to God that soul salvation is personal. You run your race, I run my race. At the end of the day, you give account, I give account. And you can imagine what joy will be like if the people that you met here on earth, you will go back and you guys will still be together. And you are like, ah! I can't believe we made it. There is a song that says, If I had wings like a dove, I love to sing it. If I had wings like a dove, I will fly high to heaven. Heaven, the beautiful city I heard about. Amim penyen emba on tibium. Amim ba food on cow heaven. Heaven. Edi ye beri dong o dong kop dem banga. 
Sometimes I wish, I wish, I wish. I said, God, I just want to see. Like, I just want to spy. I just want to see. I just want to go and see how it will be. A place that is made of gold. A place that is made of gold. The songwriter says, Welcome to the city of heaven. He says, We are marching to heaven, a beautiful city that is made of gold. Have you seen a place that is made of gold? Like, even when we have in this world, we have the mirror houses. You see, when you look at yourself in the mirror houses, how it is, how much more a place. That is made of gold. You can imagine. You don't want to miss it for anything. Because nobody can even tell you the story in hellfire. About heaven. You just want to see it for yourself. Okay. So I'm not going to take much of your time. It's my bedtime. I got to go to bed too. So you guys do your fasting. Today is our fasting day. 6 to 12. Endeavor to fast and pray. And wait on the Lord. And you will not put a faithful heart into mockery. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you. He will not abandon you. A mother can forget a loving child. A father can forget a loving child. But the Lord will not forget you. He will not forget you. In everything that you're going through, in your studies, in your marriage, in your relationship, at your job, every struggles of your life, the Lord will not forget you. The Lord will meet you at the point of your need. The Lord will meet you and will elevate you. The Lord will step in and will change every situation. When I mean every I mean in every ramification of your areas in your life that you are suffering from. The Lord will get in. He will cleanse it. He will elevate you. He will lift you. He will raise you. He will set a standard. When the evil ones will come to fight you, the Holy Spirit of God will raise a standard for you. That is the whole essence of being in God. When you begin to follow God, when you begin to stay in God, you're telling God, Father, this is me who has entered into you. Anybody that fights me begins to fight you. Anybody that contends with me have you to contend with. Anybody that does not give to me that which you have given to me has you to deal with. The battle is the Lord. Victory is just yours. Sometimes you just got to tell God, Lord, I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I'm just going to sit here and watch you fight my battles for me. You know, you will hear some people say some as if that was God. Yes, it was him. Of course it was God. It's not just you saying as if that was God. Yeah, it was God. Yes, it is him. Everything happened as if it was God. Yes, it is God. But we do not know. We underestimate the power, the grace, the mighty hands of God. The Bible speaking says, if anyhow you want me to show up for you, that is how I will show up for you. You want a mighty God. You want a great God. You want a marvelous God. You got to do great things. You got to do wonderful things. You got to do marvelous things to invite, to invoke the presence of God. To make him to act for you. To make him to work in your life. And begin to show forth himself for you. You know something? I was telling a friend the other day. I said, the reason... Africans, the reason the Africans cannot praise God is because they underestimate the power of God. Like they don't really get it. They do not know. You got to tell God, Father, I want to see you. I want to know you. Reveal yourself a little to me. Tell God. 
I hear people say these things. I hear people say these things. I want, I want you to show me yourself. Reveal yourself to me like you did to Samuel. Samuel heard the Lord three times. He was confused. He went to his master. And his master said, Samuel, when you hear the voice again, say, speak for thy servants hear it. So it is that time that you got to tell God, reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I want to hear you. The most interesting thing in this world is hearing from God. When you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Sometimes, sometimes where God speaks to people, it's not in their houses. Sometimes when God wants to speak to you, it's not at the comfort of your home. Sometimes God can speak to you when you leave your comfort zone and go to the mountain. Sometimes God can speak to you when you leave your house and go to your friends. Sometimes God can speak to you through people. Sometimes God can speak to you through dreams. Sometimes God can speak to you through revelation. But however, the most important thing here is you hearing from God. Because when you listen and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you can never get it wrong. You can never get it wrong. A lady wanted to get married. She was going around telling prophets, telling pastors, and they were telling her, no, that's not your husband. That's not your husband. It's not right for you. And she sat down. And she began to think, and she began to think, and she began to think. And then one day she said, ah, but how come, how come of all the men, this is the only person I have an innermost peace with? And she went ahead and she got married. And today she's happy. All the prophecies, all the things that they said, none of them came to pass. What am I trying to say? The Bible makes you and I to understand that whether they are prophecies, whether they are speaking in tongues, whether they are assignments, they will pass away. At the end of the day, is the word of God that will stand forever. So you got to make your Bible your best friend and begin to love God and begin to walk in the ways of God and begin to acknowledge him and accept the things that he can do for you and when he can do them and when he wants to do them for you. That's, that's the most important that's where you gotta go. That's what you gotta do. So all y'all gotta have a very good time. You gotta be happy. All y'all gotta acknowledge God and praise Him at all times. I love you guys so much. I pray for you. I bless your week in the name of God the Father. I bless your week in the name of God the Son. I bless your week in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Your going out shall be favored. Your coming in, you are blessed. In every area of your life, whatever you want to do, in a committed week into God's end, that a noiseless breakthrough will locate you. What it is that people could not do, you would begin to do them. In every problem, they will find solutions through you. You are lifted. The Lord shall settle you this week. With long life, prosperity, and good health, he says... Who you will leave to declare the good works of the Lord. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. You are covered in your going out and in your coming in. Nations shall call you blessed. Your generation shall call you blessed. Your children shall call you blessed. Your church, your workplace, wherever you go, from today henceforth, all that you would be hearing will be congratulations. Congratulations shall locate you in the south, in the west, in the north, in the east. Whatever it is that you lay your hands to do will multiply. It will grow. You will walk from strength to strength. You will mount up your wings like that of an eagle. Whatever it is that you're believing God for will come to pass for you. No weapon that is fashioned against you will prosper, and every evil tongue that will rise against you in judgment is totally thwarted. You are victorious. You are lifted. 
you would shine, 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 shine forth like a bright, a morning star. Those that call your name or those that bear your name will live to testify all the days of their lives. Remain blessed. Remember, I love you guys so much. And you guys know something? He didn't, he got, a, he, he got no choice. Like, loving you is a decision that I have made. There's nothing you can do about it. Like I said, just keep on with the fasting. And after the fasting today, it's just 6 to 12. We will come on and break our fast. Probably 2 to 3 p.m. Canada time. I will come live and we will break our fast. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, you want an healing in your body, you want grace to go forward, you want that marriage to be rectified, you want that relationship to come back. Whatever you're believing God for, you would receive according to your faith. The Bible speaking makes us to understand that we would do great and mighty things through Christ that strengthens us. That whatever it is that we declare, whatever it is that we call, he says we should call for the things that we want as if they were. So as you as you begin to wait on the Lord on your fast, begin to call the things you want to see as if they were. Begin to speak positively. Those things that you want to see in your life, begin to call them. Speak life into them. Speak life into them. Speak life into them. Begin to speak life and say, I shall not die. I will live. If everybody is lacking, I will never lack. I will smile. Begin to speak life into your situation. Begin to speak life in every area of your life. Speak life to yourself. Speak life to yourself. I would live and I would not die. Accident is not my portion. Untimely death is not my portion. I shall be celebrated. The world will know my name. Favor will locate me. Speak life into every situation. And so shall it be for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You guys have a lovely one. I gotta go to bed now. It's my night time. And I'll see you again 2 to 3 p.m. Canada time. Love you so very much. I just gotta say it over and over again. And my greatest wish for you all is heaven at last. Alright. Have a good one. Ciao, ciao.